Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Charlie State and Naga Manchetti. I had economy on the mend as more of us get back to work. Official fix hit hard by the pandemic. And in sport, a shock for Serene gave up tennis a year ago. And I'm at the National Trust Chartwell House in Kent. Once the home of Winston Churchill, I'll be taking a look around. I'll also have news of some pretty wet weather for Western Scotland, the return of summer warmth for others. All here on Breakfast. Well, if you look at the scene behind me, you'll see lots of people who slept on the side of this quite busy main road here on Lesbos last night. It's much, much longer. When I spoke to one uh, migrant yesterday, he just said, this is no good. We want to go somewhere else and start a better life. And many of the Greek locals would agree with that. Mm. OK, Bethany, thanks very much. Bethany Bell for us there in Lesbos. And that brings us to nine minutes past six on Friday morning. Now, Matt is in Chartwell for us. It's the former home of Sir Winston Churchill. Why is he there? Well, he'll tell us all about that. But it looks rather lovely behind you there. A bit of a chilly morning, though. Morning, Matt. Good morning. It is a little bit fresh, a bit, but yeah, gorgeous surroundings here at Chartwell House in uh, Kent. As like I said, once the home of Winston Churchill, the house itself will reopen on Monday and in amongst hundreds of new items trying to sort of shed a light on uh, what uh, Winston Churchill's life was like. Amazing inside. I'll be taking a tour around later on, but you can quite easily see why he fell in love with this area. It is absolutely stunning. Very, very peaceful as well, especially on a nice calm morning like this. I wish I could say it was the same everywhere this morning but it will not be. Let's take a look at the forecast for today because whilst many southern areas start a little bit on the cool side but with some dry and sunny weather around parts of Scotland, Northern Ireland expect to see some pretty wet and windy weather. He said we'll gradually see those temperatures rise. We'll have more details on that later for now. Back to Niagara and Charlie. Matt, thanks so much. Look at you moving around. Looks great. All right. Thanks very much, Matt. 11 minutes past six. That's how we wanted to do is to educate, to inform, to persuade, and people in Wales have been so willing to play their part. Mark Drakeford, Drakeford, First Minister of Wales, thank you again for your time with us on Breakfast. Thank you. Time now, 6.47. Let's have a look at the weather for the next couple of days. Looking ahead to the weekend as well, Matt's in Chartwell, one of Winston Churchill's former homes. What a glorious place that is, Matt. Oh, it is. It is. Very good morning to maybe not quite as palatial as uh, Blenheim uh, House, of course, where Blenheim Palace, where he was uh, brought up and born. But it is a stunning, stunning building, stunning location as well. And the house itself reopens to the public on Monday. The National Trust have acquired hundreds of new items to help shed light on his life here at Chartwell. I've taken a look around and who better to show me than someone who knows a house better than most? This wall over here is exactly as I remember it. Noni Chapman's relationship with Chartwell spans six decades. <clears throat> the old-fashioned typewriter and the switchboard, which is just exactly as it was. The uh, office here was a hive of industry. And all the sounds you remember at the Absolutely. time. Absolutely. You can hear the typing going on in the background. After starting work at Chartwell in the early 60s, Noni went on to play an important role supporting the family, working alongside his wife after Sir Winston died. Winston used to love to feed the golden orf in the pools and I used to have to collect the live bait that he fed them with. And one of my jobs, once a week, I used to take these big tin boxes of films, big film reels, um, with me to the station um, I think it was on a Friday, and then I would collect the new films, um, which would be shown at the weekend. Her experience has helped the National Trust unlock some of the secrets and stories behind hundreds of items acquired and soon to be on show here. So this is Winston Churchill's study. It's one of the most important rooms in the house, and this is where he would spend hours of his time. So amongst others, there's a beautiful painting of Blenheim Palace, of course, where he was born, a speech box as well, which housed the notes that would inform the words that would inspire a nation. This is one of the most important objects in our whole collection. It charts visitors to Chartwell between 1924 and 1964, and with over 700 signatures, it really is a who's who of the early 20th century. Uh, among the signatories are Charlie Chaplin, 
Uh, and my favourite is a, a lesser known figure. It's a gentleman called Fabian von Schlabrendorf. He was a member of the German resistance who was informing Churchill in the lead up to the Second World War and visited Chartwell afterwards. And he was actually involved in an assassination attempt on Hitler. So a really interesting individual. Volunteers have given up 6,000 hours of their time to help with the project. Their research, as well as the new items to the house, have really put the essence of Churchill back into Chartwell. But what better resource did the National Trust have than the people who knew him the best? Lady Churchill was... Uh, I adored her. She was a wonderful character, but she was a very strong character. And I often used to think... It amazed me how two such strong characters must have lived together in such harmony. The atmosphere was fantastic. It was such a happy atmosphere. Lady Churchill loved flowers. There was always flowers everywhere, log fires burning. Um, you could just go where you wanted to. Everybody was happy here. As you can hear, she absolutely loved the place. Absolute joy to speak uh, to uh, Noni uh, yesterday. Uh, heard lots more about Churchill, all the things I didn't know. And you get a real feel of that if you go and visit the museum. It is, of course, open from Monday, as I mentioned, but you will have to book in advance, of course, to come here, like many places across the country at the moment. And what a view you'll enjoy as well. Very peaceful start here at Chartwell this morning. Not quite the same everywhere. Let's take a look at the forecast because whilst many parts of England and Wales, in fact, much of the country starts dry, we have got much more in the way of cloud and outbreaks of rain set to spread across Scotland, Northern Ireland today. Quite a wet and windy spell through this morning, even further. Real feel of summer in the air as we go into the start of uh, next week, particularly for England and Wales. Could see highs on Monday of 28 degrees in the southeast corner, could get close to 30 degrees. And whilst it won't be quite as warm as Scotland, Northern Ireland, we'll still see temperatures get into the 20s. That is how your weather is looking over the next few days. These are the glorious sound rooms of Chartwell. I'll hand you back now to Nag and Charlie. It is a stunning location there, Matt. We'll enjoy being with you throughout the morning this morning. See you later on. Thank you. Six minutes to seven is the time from next... Time now is just coming up to ten minutes past seven. It's time to get an update on the weather with Matt. Matt's at Chartwell, former home of Sir Winston Churchill. Morning, Matt. And um, We've been talking about tea this morning. I hope you've had a cuppa. I have indeed. I've been very well looked after first thing this morning. Nice cup of coffee in my hands. Uh, not that I need it that much. Not particularly uh, chilly here this morning, but lovely, lovely surroundings. Uh, Chartwell House, as you said, once the home of Winston Churchill, reopened to the public on Monday. Lots of new items acquired by the National Trust to help shed a light on his life here. And to tell you something, you learn a lot of interesting stuff about Churchill you may not have known before. And I'll be taking a look around later this morning. But you can see why I fell in love with the place with views like this. As I said, Cam starts here, but across the rest of the UK, it's not all the same. The forecast, certainly across Scotland and Northern Ireland today, is one of some wet and windy weather. The rest of the weekend coming up before quarter to eight. Thanks, Matt. See you then. 11 minutes past seven is the time. So the Negotiations carry on, and we are confident in the EU uh, negotiators and in our negotiators understand where we are coming from when it comes to what we're asking for, which is no more than there are impacts from the withdrawal agreement and protocol that would impact the community. ...legal action, there was a threat of no deal. How hard is that going to hit? A deal like Canada, a deal like Australia is I also good I don't understand. You just told our, me we had a uh, deal. Economy. ...in the future relationship. Naga, we've already done a deal, we've left the European Union. We're negotiating on the future relationship. Nadim Zahawi, thank you very much for your time. Um, talking to us, Business Minister from Millbank. 7.45 is the time now. Worth mentioning, we are speaking to Gordon Brown, the, the former Chancellor, of course, former Prime Minister, uh, later in the programme around the sky outside. Uh, Matt's at uh, Chartwell, which is He's where... He's changed. We... Matt's changed. He's has been changed into... transformation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there He's we much are. Much cuter. Yes. Much cuter. Well, let's just look at the cat for a while. That's I much think better. so. Um, cat watch works yeah. for me. Always a winner. That little bowl of milk or cream oh, no, you've I'll tempted bet. that with. Tell Matt. us where the cat is, Matt. It's... 
It is a little bit of food. I have to explain. This is Jock, not just Jock, it's Jock 7. A little thing you probably didn't know about Churchill was his love of nature and uh, of animals. And uh, the family stipulated when they handed uh, Chartwell House, where I'm at at the moment, over to National Trust, that there must always be a marmalade cat on site with a uh, white bib and four white socks. And as I said, this is the seventh such cat to be here at Chartwell House. Very good. The uh, white bib and four white socks. And as I said, this is the seventh such cat to be here at Chartwell House. Very good morning to lovely. A little bit, a uh, little bit nervous at the moment, a bit camera shy, but glorious surroundings. I take a look around the house later. National Trust have added lots of hundreds, hundreds of uh, brand new items to give a bit of a glimpse into uh, Churchill's life here at Chartwell in the past. Uh, it reopens again on Monday to the public. And as I said, I will show you around just before around quarter to nine. Let's take a look at the forecast though for uh, today because it is a case of nice enough down here at the moment with uh, a dry start, a little bit of brightness around. But if you're in Scotland and Northern Ireland today, get ready for some very very wet weather in week and that's how it's looking. I'll hand you back to Naga and Charlie. Matt, thanks very much. It is absolutely beautiful there. And to Jock. What was his full name again? Jock Seven. There, oh, he, there is. he is. Gorgeous. Uh, 748 is the time now. So and I'm at the National Trust Chartwell House. Uh, take a look around what was once Winston Churchill's home. Plus, I have news of some very wet weather for Scotland and the return of some warm summer warmth elsewhere. All here on Breakfast. It is 11 minutes past eight. Matt's having the weather from a beautiful location, which is the former home of Sir Winston Churchill. Morning to you, Matt. Morning. Good morning, both of you. Certainly am um, a stunning, stunning location to be. Took a look around the house uh, through uh, yesterday. You'll get to see that just around quarter to nine. Learn lots of new facts about him. But I can see why he loved this location and why he loved Kent overall, because the house not only is stunning inside, real family home, but you get a view like this to look out to. And today the weather is near enough perfect down here for the morning. It's a calm start. Uh, it's uh, warming up a little bit after a rather chilly start, but here much calmer than we'll see across other parts of the country. The forecast for today is one that will come with a, quite a bit of rain across parts of Western Scotland and Numa into the start of next week too. Naga, Charlie, back to you both. Matt, thanks very much. See you later on. Several cities with rising coronavirus cases will find... What he thought would happen at the end of October in terms of unemployment. And I know this is one of the key things you're talking about. He was talking about a, a 6 to a 6.5% unemployment rate. Days. I want to ask you about uh, what's happening in relation to Brexit. And I, I'm, I hope that's OK with you because we know that... Uh, infuriated, I'm sorry, uh, his <laughs> EU counterparts who are going into those trade negotiations as, as it stands... There's a threat of legal action, the possibility the talks will break down. What do you make of the position that the British government... Uh, and that's due to happen at the beginning of next week. It is infuriate, infuriate, infuriated, I'm sorry, uh, his <laughs> EU counterparts who are going into those trade negotiations as, as it stands. Well, it's a known goal. It's, it's self-harm. You can't sign an international treaty a few weeks ago, uh, probably, what was it, uh, 12... That this is a negotiating tactic. He thinks, uh, as he did the last time, that whether it's the Irish Prime Minister or Angela Merkel accept somehow that the rule of law might be broken, and that's just not going to happen. Look, my fear is not just that we have a Europe will take sanctions, and you can have it one month uh, after uh, January, or you can have it a year after January, but it's a recipe for perpetual conflict. Now, Gordon Brown, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to stop you there, not least because, my apologies, you have actually frozen on our screens at the moment, and that is that sometimes happens on Zoom calls, but I see you right back right now. But I really appreciate your time talking to us this morning. Thank you so much. There we go. <laughs> That's definitely over. Uh, that ended, and I invented a new word. Well, it's infuriating when that happens, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it infuriating? <laughs> I think that's what it was. Uh, let's talk to Matt. He's at Winston Churchill's, one of his former homes. Um, what is the weather going to infuriate us today, Matt? Morning. I think it will do for some, Naga. Very good morning to you. But I am indeed at Chartwell House, Winston Churchill's uh, former home, as Naga has just said. Uh, reopens to the public on Monday. Lots of new items. And who better to show me around than someone who knows the house pretty well? This wall over here is exactly as I remember it. 
Noni Chapman's relationship with Chartwell spans six decades. <clears throat> the old-fashioned typewriter and the switchboard, which is just exactly as it was. The uh, office here was a hive of industry. And all the sounds you remember at the time. Absolutely. You can hear the typing going on in the background. After starting work at Chartwell in the early 60s, Noni went on to play an important role supporting the family, working alongside his wife after Sir Winston died. Winston used to love to feed the golden orf in the pools. And I used to have to collect the live bait that he fed them with. And one of my jobs, once a week, I used to take these big tin boxes of films, big film reels, um, with me to the station. Um, I think it was on a Friday. And then I would collect the new films, um, which would be shown at the weekend. Her experience has helped the National Trust unlock some of the secrets and stories behind hundreds of items acquired and soon to be on show here. So this is Winston Churchill's study. It's one of the most important rooms in the house and this is where he would spend hours of his time. So amongst others, there's a beautiful painting of Blenheim Palace, of course, where he was born. A speech box as well, which housed the notes that would inform the words that would inspire a nation. This is one of the most important objects in our whole collection. It charts visitors to Chartwell between 1924 and 1964, and with over 700 signatures, it really is a who's who of the early 20th century. Uh, among the signatories are Charlie Chaplin, uh, and my favourite is a, a lesser-known figure. It's a gentleman called Fabian von Schlabrendorf. He was a member of the German resistance who was informing Churchill in the lead-up to the Second World War and visited Chartwell afterwards. And he was actually involved in an assassination attempt on Hitler, so a really interesting individual. Volunteers have given up 6,000 hours of their time to help with the project. Their research, as well as the new items to the house, have really put the essence of Churchill back into Chartwell. But what better resource did the National Trust have than the people who knew him the best? Lady Churchill was... I adored her. She was a wonderful character, but she was a very strong character. And I often used to think... It amazed me how two such strong characters must have lived together in such harmony. The atmosphere was fantastic. It was such a happy atmosphere. Lady Churchill loved flowers. There was always flowers everywhere, log fires burning. Um, you could just go where you wanted to. Everybody was happy here. It was an absolute joy to speak to Noni. She has such strong affection for the family, how she still volunteers here over 50 years later. And what's not to love, to be honest, lovely, calm location as well. And a calm start to the morning weather-wise here at the moment. It won't be the same everywhere, though. Let's take a look at that forecast, because if you're in Scotland and Northern Ireland, you'll need a strong... For some of you, temperatures up to around 28 degrees possible across the southeast corner. May get above 20 degrees in Scotland too. And some of that warmth will continue into Tuesday. So that's what you've got to look forward to weather-wise through the weekend, whatever your plans, enjoy. But from me, enjoy these lovely surroundings of Chartwell House. Back to Naga and Charlie. I'm also enjoying seeing the... Is it part corduroy and part uh, sheepskin uh, jacket? Is that a first appearance for the season? It is. It's not. Uh, yes, it is. It is the first appearance. It's winter almost. As soon as this comes out, I've got cold. There you go. You see, that's the kind of test you want to. What we're the weatherman's in, wearing. We're barely into autumn. Are, are we, we closing it? Are we going tight autumn? in on the corduroy there? I thought the camera was going. Just get a. Full, there we go. Very nice. It's lovely. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> there it's we go. And buttons and everything. It's got everything. <laughs> it's got say. the whole lot sorted. 8.53 is the you time. You connoisseur of fashion, you. Connoisseur of corduroy. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a wrestler's name. That sounds right up Louis Theroux Street, doesn't it? The, the connoisseur of corduroy. Is Louis there? Are we going to talk to him now? <laughs> no, we're going to, have a, we're going to chat to Louis Theroux in just a moment. Of course, he's done amazing documentaries over the years, but he's gone back to look at some of the people he's met in the past. And you know, when we do talk to him, we're going to be asking him about what a connoisseur of corduroy looks like. First, though... Um, he's got a new series called Louis Theroux, Life on the Edge. Discontinue! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want you to feel
feel something. <laughs> feel something. Put your hand right in through here. Put your hand right here. Here? Where? Here? Or just rub sweat. your hand up down. On the beam. Yeah, a lot of sweat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. energy yeah. beam. How do you feel? Oh, uh, that was intense. <laughs> that was incredible. Louis Theroux joins us now. Louis, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I found that really funny. And you know what? The joy of you is that you don't, you, you, you always present yourself as completely open-minded to...